Hey YouTubers, and welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super Rewrite. So, guys, because I don't have a whole lot of time on my hands, as I promised in the last video, I'm going to be trying to do two or three of these per episode. But because I don't have a lot of time on my hands, I'm only going to be doing episode three. I think this totally makes sense, though, because the vision I wanted to do with this rewrite really hinged on the fact that the first three episodes were really their soul-centric character episodes as we reintroduce Goku and Vegeta, and then we start introducing Beerus and Whis. One of the biggest problems I have with Dragon Ball Super is that from the very beginning, we see Beerus and Whis already up to whatever they're going to be doing. Beerus has been awake for some time now, even if it was just very recently. And I think one of the things that the movie did much better is showing us Whis actually waking up Beerus and Beerus being groggy and trying to figure out exactly what was going on and why he decided to wake up in the first place. So this is something I think is really important to show if we were actually going to take the movie and try to adapt it, especially trying to adapt the Dragon Ball Super story for everything that we know. So with that being said, let's just jump right into this. So where we ended episode two, I think we jump right back into it. Goku and Vegeta are training in their respective areas. Goku is on King Kai's planet. Vegeta's in the gravity room on Earth, and they can feel each other training. Obviously, they showed this throughout Dragon Ball Z. Anyone on their level who powers up to their maximum can feel the other person. So what I think is when Goku is on King Kai's planet, he starts powering up to Super Saiyan. That kind of pulls Vegeta into showing Goku that he can also go Super Saiyan. He can also, you know, match him for every single step of the way. So Vegeta powers up, Goku powers up, Vegeta powers up to the point where they're releasing so much energy that they're shaking a very small segment of the universe, but wide enough to actually reach the Beerus and Whis planet that we've seen throughout the movies and Super. And we're seeing that whole structure and that whole planet kind of shaking because of Goku and Vegeta's power. I know a lot of people are power scaling are going to get at me, but I really think that this would be a really cool way to introduce Beerus and Whis. So, it's all shaking, everything's a little out of whack, and we see one of those alarm clock detonating grenade energy bombs that Beerus has around him as he's sleeping start to move with the shaking of the planet till it gets closer and closer to a wall very close to touching and detonating before we see the swipe of a wand and the thing just disappears into the depths of the universe where it can't hurt or disturb anyone and just simply blows up in a huge unbelievable supernova type explosion i mean this thing is huge and in that explosion we then kind of meld into what beerus is dreaming as we see a silhouette of some figure actually fighting beerus and we get an idea that this is the super saiyan God and we're in Beerus's dream seeing what he's seeing the fight that's going to happen inevitably in this arc but from there we cut back to Whis walking up the stairs in a very calm cool and collective way despite Despite the destruction that we just saw, as everything stops shaking and we realize that Goku and Vegeta have stopped their little petty power-up argument that they've been kind of doing with each other from across the universe. And at that point, we watch Whis walk up the stairs and greet Beerus as he's trying to sleep and just ever so subtly try to wake him up, nudging him, kicking him, doing everything in his power to actually wake Beerus up as quietly as possible possible until he finally begrudgingly actually wakes up and we get a lot of awesome bickering back and forth between these two awesome characters so obviously Beerus is a little droggy he's not really wanting to get up at this point but Whis takes him through the motions he helps him take a bath he helps him get ready and get dressed all these little things the whole way through they're having this little dialogue and Beerus learns that Frieza actually was taken out by a Saiyan and this is the first inclination that we get to see that Beerus woke up for a reason he has this idea although it's kind of fleeting at first that I wanted to wake up for something and it has something to do with Saiyans maybe it had something to do with Frieza maybe I should have told Frieza to take out that stinky Saiyan planet because they're not really evolving and Whis kind of tells him look you already told him to do that and he did it there's not any Saiyans left he's like oh yeah okay that's 
Of course, that's it. So after Beerus is done getting ready, Whis takes him to a brand new planet that is somewhat, you know, just a couple thousand years old with new life that's actually kind of a little bit sophisticated that has these dinosaurs on it that have very delicate meat, you know, the most delicate and scrumptious meat in the entire universe. And he tells Beerus, look, we need to go check this out because I haven't had it yet, but it you know, rumor has it that this is the best stuff that we could possibly get. Beerus is very excited about this, and when they get to the planet, they have a bit of confrontation with the primitive beings on the planet because Beerus and Whis go on, just like in the television show, and try to steal the bounty of their hunt, and they want to fight Beerus for it. But Beerus is just still very sleepy. He's not really dealing with this, and he just simply blows up the planet without ever trying the meat. You know, they disrespected him. He's not going to deal with it. But the explosion of that planet really, like in the show, makes him think more so of his dream, and we get a vision of this silhouette of a warrior who's fighting Beerus in a really epic struggle, and Beerus starts to realize, oh yeah, that's why I woke up. That's why I had this dream. I have this vision in my head. There's something about the Saiyans. It's a super Saiyan God. This thing that I woke up for, this thing that will be my equal, I need to go find this. So he asks Whis, he's like, look, I know I told Frieza to go blow up the Saiyan planet. Are there any Saiyans left? And Whis, after consulting with his staff, goes, okay, there are a couple of Saiyans left. There's only a couple on Earth. There's also this one on King Kai's planet. And Beerus thinks, well, that's weird. There's a Saiyan on a Kai planet. Those guys are primitive. They're really nasty creatures. I can't believe one of them was good enough to actually be on a Kai's planet. Let's go check that out. And Whis tells him, okay, but in this version, the only difference I'm making is it's actually going to take far longer for them to get there. You know, it's like, it's going to take a couple of days. Are you sure you want to go just immediately? I know this is kind of making Whis a little less powerful than he is and making the instant transmission way more powerful than it actually is. But I really think we shouldn't be that strong in the grander scope of things. He shouldn't be that fast in the grander scope of things. They should move at a relative pace, and the universe should be much bigger and grander than what the show actually showed us. So Beerus realized, well, we can't go yet. I'm still really hungry. We need to actually go figure out where to get some breakfast or something before this. But don't let me forget this, because this is the only reason I actually woke up. I really want to start fighting or at least meet this Super Saiyan God who will be my equal. This is the majority of the episode. Just Beerus Beerus and Whis actually having this back and forth, getting really to know them in a very intimate level because that's one of the things I think Dragon Ball Super really didn't do. It introduced Beerus and Whis in a more unique way than we got to see in the movies. They were different characters, especially Beerus. We need to introduce him and show that this is the character that he's going to be, maybe even a little bit darker and nastier than what we remember from the movies. That's what I would have done. From there, we cut into the void as we see two creatures zoom through the darkness at the speed of light. Suddenly, they stop and share a couple of words together about what it is that they're searching for. One of the fat creatures who does look like a fat Beerus motions to what appears to be a female Whis to blow up the planet in front of them. She does it and they just go back on their way. I think you go back and end the episode with Goku training, showing him in the tracksuit finally, and trying to actually lift up and messing up King Kai's planet. We know we're going to get back here very soon. But in the next episode, I think we jump into a couple of days into the future. In the next episode, I think we follow Beerus and Whis as they decide to go to Goku's planet, maybe even allowing them to actually get some food and probably showing more depth to Beerus' power and his darkness and what he's actually willing to use his power for. Give us a little indication of what Goku might lose if he loses the fight between Beerus and at the same time reintroduce all the characters that we haven't seen thus far. And building up the area and the situation in which the Battle of Gods will actually take place, the seeds of which have already been set in the last video I did. So with all that being said, I know this one was a little bit shorter and a little less thought out than the last one. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys are excited to see the other rewrites that I have in store for you guys. 
the episode by episode description and what I think really should have happened. I know right now it's kind of what we got throughout the entire series, but as I said, these are real character-centric episodes. We're not cutting back and forth very much between what's going on with this character and this character. We're just trying to reestablish things as they are and giving us a base for the future of the franchise. So like I keep saying, I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe for more of these videos in the future because I really want to keep bringing them to you. Don't forget to hit that bell over by the subscriber button to notify you every single time I upload and share this video out to all your friends so they can share their thoughts and opinions as well. It's been real.